we had a question last week where a uh, listener uh, was SMSed in here. Also, please let us know where could one learn about zikr? You know, like you have classes for everything else. They want to, they, this, this listener wants to know about uh, classes for zikr or something. Well, you know, that's an excellent question. And I think, actually, the questioner has answered half of the question in their question. And that is, is that the zikr is something that needs to be learned, mm-hmm. right? And I think that their acknowledgement of that is a real testament to their sincerity. And you have to think that whenever there's anything priceless in this world, anything that has any value, we always feel that, you know, the best way to get that is to learn that from a person who is proficient in that art, that person who is proficient in that discipline, that person who is proficient in that field of knowledge. So the sicker should be learned from somebody who themselves learned zikr from somebody, who themselves learned zikr from somebody, etc., etc., back in a continuous chain of unbroken transmission to Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, depending where the person lives in the world, what they need to do is they need to try to find a teacher of zikr. I would say if they're in Johannesburg, then we know two sheikhs in Johannesburg, Sheikh Musa Akudi and Sheikh Junaid Mullah. And so, if they can contact either one of them, then they would be able to learn zikr. Why is it that you need a teacher? Right? A person would say, but look, you know, there's so many books of zikr. Imam al Rahimahullah, the great muhaddith and shafi, faqih, the jurist of Islam, has written a book called Kitab al Azkar, the collection of zikr. Or a person may think that in fact Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi himself has mentioned the hadith, different types of zikr. Well, the reason for this is, is that the type of zikr that we are talking about here is a little bit different. Let me explain. The type of zikr we are talking about is a cure for an illness. You see, there's eating medicine and there's eating food. Now, somebody says that, why should I take the medicine when I can just eat food? And I would say, no, that would be the best, that we want you to eat food. But you have a problem. You have indigestion. You're not able to digest the food. You're not able to intake the food. You're not able to absorb all the nutrients of food. Therefore, what you need to do is you need to start taking these medicines. If you're a little bit sick, maybe you just need vitamins or some basic pills. If you're very sick, maybe you need antibiotics. But once you take these medicines and you become healthy, then you will be able to benefit from the food. So what is the food? The food is tilawat of Qur'an and praying nafil salah. But the problem is that a person is coming to us and saying that when I pray my far salah, I'm not able to remember Allah. So it would be nonsensical to tell that person that, okay, go pray nafil. Because he will stare at you and say, look, this is my problem. I know how to pray. I can pray 20 nafil. The problem is, is that I'm not able to remember Allah's ta'ala in my prayer. So I have a particular sickness. So whenever you want to be cured, it's always best to put yourself under the direct care and instruction of a healer, of a person who has dealt with many other patients, a person who has experience with different sicknesses, a person who has experience in which cure is going to be the most beneficial for that sickness. So the zikr is something, and this type of zikr, that is a cure for ghaflat. That zikr, which is a cure for ghaflat, is best learned by somebody who is trained and authorized by a sheikh, who himself was trained and authorized by a sheikh, etc., to administer this 